Listener discretion is advised. Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Loveline, coast to coast. Hey, everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Addiction medicine specialist. Kevin Weisman's our guest tonight. How's it going? He's, uh, thank you. He's from Alias, which is uh, ABC Sunday nights, 9 o'clock. Probably just missed it. Or, no, you probably saw it. That's what I wanted yeah, to say. Yeah, just finishing up. And uh, this Alias is... Uh, oh, poor Kevin, I think he wonders if we're actually on the air. We were in the middle of a conversation. Go ahead, Kevin, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, trans- <laughs> he's transition. Like, I saw a look on his face like, huh? What? Huh? Kevin, no, like, I'm kidding. <laughs> Adam was entertaining until about 15 <laughs> seconds ago when he started talking in that long thing with the windsock on the end of it. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. smooth. You guys are smooth. <laughs> we make a smooth transition yeah. from talking into more talking. I can believe it. <laughs> yeah. I, I go seamlessly in, from complaining to complaining yeah. into oh, the microphone. Yes, yes. More people listening. In no. Oh, my God. Don't uh, tempt him. All right. Well, I got to say a few oh, things. Oh, yeah. No I, doubt. No yeah. doubt. Well, uh, first off, congratulations on uh, Alias. Thanks Big a hit. lot. Yeah. We're, we're excited. Kevin plays uh, Marshall, the uh, obsessive techno geek, by the way, for those of you who uh, know the show. And I'm, I'm guessing that's quite a few people because uh, maybe it was just the timing of uh, ABC having a rough year. And really, the only thing they had to brag about was Alias, it yeah. seemed, mm-hmm. uh, all year. But Almost they a were blessing ri- in disguise. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, because they're, you stood it, out. all the eggs are going in the Alias basket. Yeah. But, you know, also we want people to be watching other shows and then see commercials for Alias. So I I do want the other shows to do well amongst, you know, also because I'm just a nice guy. Well, uh, I guess they're getting back to it, but... uh, I've always been indoctrinated at ABC Family BS. (laughs) Drew, you're trying to get indoctrinated in that BS yourself. (laughs) I do know about that. All right, here, I got got my people. The the point is, is uh, Alias is just... uh, now, see, we do this show, so we've never seen the show. Drew, you've never seen this. We, we have to leave for work. You've seen a lot of commercials you gotta for it. you got to get the TiVo. you got to get the TiVo, and then you watch it when you get home. seen a lot of commercials for it. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is quite a compliment, Drew. <laughs> Her two love interests are meeting this week. Yeah. Or met tonight. Which is kind of uh, it's misleading, but yes, they did meet. Or tonight. some guy that's in her head and somebody that's actually... You no, know, they're both real. Okay. One of them is her friend who recently found out that she was a, a undercover spy mm-hmm. uh, and one who works for the CIA who was her handler. They actually met this week. Very uh, high drama. Well, I think, I think it's safe to say that it was... Uh Probably the biggest hit last year, if not the biggest, certainly in the top few of uh, new shows. Yeah, we have so a lot of we got a lot of lot of fans. A lot of uh, it's kind of got that internet craze, uh, that X Files kind yeah. of obsession. People really have responded to the show, and it's nice. You, know? Are you getting any weirdos following you? Or I got a few psycho fans, a few psycho fans, but most of them are are pretty cool. And uh, you know, there hasn't been any any love knives at this point. All right, that's coming. Which is good. I had, an, I had an invention today. I was uh, over at uh, my uh, ex-partner Jimmy's house yes. doing, uh, watching the football games as uh, we all do every Sunday. Uh, and what happened to the Raiders? Yeah. I, I know. Well, I'm a Rams fan. Well, I was so say, I was the Rams came to life. Down, down, but, right, yeah. But uh, uh, his, uh, his daughter has yeah. a uh, had one of those gag knives where you spring-loaded. You know, it looks like a dagger. Yeah. You stab the person, but the yes. uh, the blade just goes into the handle. Yeah, that's it, nice for a ten year old. Yeah, she was having. With well, that. yeah, who's gonna play with it? A forty year old? <laughs> it's four ten year olds, you idiot. It's for a twelve year old. Twelve year old. Twelve year old. Look, jack off kid. She, boy. Well, it was probably his sons, but she picked it up. She's walking around stabbing everyone all day. Ooh. I thought to myself, here's a good invention. A good invention is a, a gag knife where the blade slides in only after the first one. Then it locks into place. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yes. There might be a lawsuit. I'd have to work on it. But I thought knowing that it, it's it'd be show, really funny. You were going to go for like a gag penis or something. Just no, re- same knife. Same knife. First one slides right yeah, in. Right. Then it's when you lock. try it, it locks. Huh? Good. That's I good, like right? It. I like it. Double All right. Seven. We got to take some uh, calls. I got to talk for a go. second about uh, packing peanuts. You know these styrofoam things? No. Styrofoam, oh, yes, yes, peanuts. Yes. That, uh, I didn't know that's what they were called, but yo, oh, yeah. Well, they used to be shaped like peanuts. Like now they're cashews, shaped like something like, else. Like cashews, sort of. Well, they, yeah, they used to be shaped like peanuts, and I think they call them packing peanuts or yeah. something now like that. Now they're more kind of wavy. Yeah, now, now they, they, they do resemble more of a cashew. Yeah. Perhaps a Brazil nut, true. 
Sure. They don't have to be a nut. But they right. put pieces of styrofoam about the size of, uh, the size your of your watch yeah. or your peanut. Uh, sorry, yes. So here's the dealio. I got a, uh, I got a garbage can full of these things. Mm -hmm. It's got a bunch of stuff in the uh, mail, and, and they pack everything in these things now. If you get a piece of stereo equipment or a vase or whatever, it just comes in this stuff. And you take this stuff and you throw it away. So you end up having a trash can full of it. Then when the trash can, when the trash man comes around and the robotic arm grabs the trash can. Spills 40 pounds of it. And it does it, 40 pounds yeah, of it end yeah. up on the street. Yeah. Now, my garbage man likes to come um, to, to 6.30 in the morning. And I like to head out to work about 10.30 in the morning. So that leaves a nice uh, three, four hours for the stuff to spread. And it spreads. And it's all the way down the street because every time a car drives by, it takes another handful mm -hmm. of it another hundred yards down my street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I come out in the morning. It's like I'm running late for work, and it's uh, 1030. And, oh, uh, no, I'm your neighbors. Oh, yeah. Oh. So I'm looking around, and I'm saying, all right, there's oh. peanuts oh. everywhere. And you can see the origin of it is oh. my house. Evil now, line. this is this yeah. is where, this is well, the cradle of peanut you, civilization. You need a little history here. Adam is sort of universally demonized by his neighbors and his neighborhood, especially the immediate neighbors, right? Oh, just the bitch who lives next okay. to me. And the, guy, the old guy across the street you threatened to kill? Well, I didn't threaten to kill him. I just threatened to come down there. Okay. And that was enough to scare him. Okay. But I think he died. Uh, oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Well, whatever. The a co apartment complex or more of houses? It's a house. Okay. It's a house. But I had a crazy bitch who uh, lived next to me and still does. And uh, then the crazy guy next door, I think he kicked off and oh. now everything's right. quiet the, over the there. The lady with the shrubs next door. Yeah, so I'm out front. I'm trying to clean these uh, styrofoam packing peanuts up. And I'm re first thing I do is I grab a broom and I realize, uh-uh. Nah, now, it doesn't really work on these things. You sort of right. sweep them, they grab the ground, and then they're too light. As you try to scoop them off, they sort of fall off. So you're trying to get sort of bunches of them into the trash then can. they break apart. They break apart. And meanwhile, the wind is blowing them all over the place. Down the street, they're in everyone's shrubs. They're on each side of the street. They're in the, like in the sprinklers. They're getting wet. They're in the gutter. And it's all the way down. I mean, it's a couple hundred yards at this point. Mm -hmm. And just about the time I'm figured, I'm just cutting my losses. Like, look, I'm running late for work. I, I let someone's gardener get. I'm getting my car. Here comes the woman up the street. Now, it's not, it's not the bitchy neighbor. It's the other woman is down the street. And this is the quintessential central casting neighbor. She's <laughs> 68. Like the Her bewitched. hair's like the, beet red. The, the, across yeah. the street from the bewitched. She, she looks like George Costanza's wife yeah. from uh, right. Mom from yes. Seinfeld. You know, right. she comes up. She's walking her dog. And she's like, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> she's like, well, we got quite a mess here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know. These all came from here. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. And then now, 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 we're now we start. Who's going to clean this up? Jeez, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I don't know. I, I don't. Well, they're not going to clean them. I mean, they don't break down. Now she's really getting it. You, you can't sweep them into the garden. They, they have to be cleaned up. They don't break down. And then again, who's going to clean this up? And I'm just standing. Now I'm, I'm sweating already because I've been bending over and work and it's hot. I'm running late. I'm just standing and I'm looking down the street and it's just like someone put them in a C-130 airplane and just <laughs> scatter them like uh, like fire retardant just uh, on a fire. And it just sounds. She, she kept saying, who's going to clean it? And I just said. I guess I'll have to... Yeah, because, no, what else? Where are they going to go? I picked up a five-gallon bucket, and I walked a half mile down the street, and I plucked each oh, good damn one up. By, they're in people's garbage. They were, like, spread out. They're in the plants. They're up the driveway. On the knees! On the knees, up and down the street. It's cars to, whizzing by. It's hard to be a grown-up. One hour worth but of that. I, one hour. I, here's the, real, the, the awful thing <sighs> about it. Really, ultimately, it's not your responsibility. It was the garbage man. Yeah, but and, and what, what are you going to do? do? What are you going to do? do? Oh, what were you, you buying? Go. You can go home now. What were you, what you going to do? Uh, I got married, and uh, I got a bunch of gifts in the mail uh, all that week, <laughs> and the garbage can was just packed right. full of those peanuts, and, you know. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious. I wanted to know what the actual items were. I was curious. Uh, Porn, so, so man. Whoa. Yeah. Teresa, 37. I would have traded them all in for someone to clean this thing up. Teresa? Yeah. What's up? Well, I'm a nun, and I'm kind of... Slow down. You're a nun? Yeah. Okay. Oh. And I'm kind of getting into this relationship with this man. How long have you been a nun? Um, ten years. Ten years. Uh, why did you become a nun? Well, it was just kind of belief, and I've been raised in the Catholic Church all my life. And it's just kind of a... 
I thought maybe that's what God wanted me to do. No. Why do you want to be a nun? What was going on? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, people have become serial killers tell them that's what God told them right. to do, too, you yeah, know? I just felt that would be a good thing. What else was going on in your life? What were you doing for a living? How were your relationships going? Well, what was your family? It, all, it was all bad. What Come was, on, of course. What was your family of origin like? I had a good family, and I was living, I lived with my parents till, you see, I, I'm 37 now. I've been a nun for 10 years, so I was living with my parents till I was 25. Were you dating then, going out with guys? No. How come? Um, just not really my interest. I mean, I wasn't a lesbian or anything. It's just, I just You're fat. Drew, uh, please. No, <laughs> I'm not. All right. But, um... Anyways, and no, whoa, 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 no, you're not getting off that easy. Yeah, well, come on, we gotta figure this out. Uh, well, well, life wasn't going well for her, and she was having problems with. Well, whatever's going on now is going to be. Yeah, know. but who cares? She's a nun now. Yeah, but I think there's something coming here. So yeah. what? So what's happening now? So now, um, I'm getting into this relationship. And I don't know if I should continue or maybe just. Uh, part away from being a nun and maybe get married to this man i mean we've only it's, i've only been in this relationship for about a month or two what's up with this guy that goes after you as a nun the challenge, I think. Well, he, doesn't, the challenge. he doesn't really know i'm a nun oh and do people just drop those vows that's something that just oh well god's well, image is now i'm kind of confused as it is about what all i believe and stuff and i'm kind of going away from the catholic and i'm kind of embarrassed to say that i'm catholic now because you know when they had all the priest molestation and stuff like that i kind of put my head down well well f first off you got to put that in perspective i mean it's probably only 50 40 or 50 percent <laughs> of the priests that actually did the molesting <laughs> teresa i, I mean, know but, but still, you know not even half probably up. not half probably right. just a little more than half yeah but still people yeah a couple still. bad seeds teresa she make a great attorney yeah and she, <laughs> <laughs> teresa yeah, yeah, but still, you know what I love about her? Nobody listens to this show. Yeah, even the people that call in don't listen to they the show. They don't listen to you. <laughs> they listen to the show. They don't listen to you. Here it is. There, there's three. There's three people walking, so I, and I can take the entire planet, break it into three sections. There's the people who don't listen to the show, who really don't listen to the show. Right. Then the people who listen to the show don't really listen to the show. And then the people who actually call in the show who don't listen to the show. <laughs> right. so no, but three. nobody listens. Nobody else. Were the, is there's not a section of people that do listen and, and mm. heed the advice? No. 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 They listen but don't hear. No. That's but, right. Especially well, that's, the calling population. Sounds like my relationships. Nobody's right. listening. Teresa? Yeah. Okay. So you were saying that um, a little less than 50% of the Catholic priests molest. Go on. Anyways. And so, with this... Can you... Can, uh, do, 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 this is a good transition. Yeah. Uh, All right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And now, do, do you have to wear the uh, habit and the frock and everything? Yeah, um, not always. Just when I'm at the nun. Has he ever caught you wearing it by accident? Like, oh, what is that? Why? Not really. I mean, he's been to my place before. Not really? Just sort of, or...? Well, almost one time, but not really. So the answer is, he's never caught you? No, he's never has. He never has. Okay, just but, say that. But you, you see, sorry, what I'm, Teresa I'm is so full of denial and all sorts of obfuscation. This is why I was going after what her situation is. I uh, there's something really going on. I there. don't know what obfuscation means, <laughs> but it's I know what it feels Teresa, like to talk to the Teresa. The word sounds perfect for her. Yeah. Okay. Teresa, uh -huh. I drew asked some good questions. You ever get molested? Um, no. Physically abused? Um, no. Do you know what that means? Physically abused? Um, like. Anybody ever hit you? Yes, that, no, right, nobody, that, well, my parents did spank me. All right, but. so you're, well, we, did you get dropped on your head or anything as a young person? No. Why didn't you date as a, as a, as a young adult? Well, I did leave one thing out. I, I kind of, I only, well, I only had maybe about two boyfriends my whole life. Right. Like, until, like, I decided to become a nun. And, I don't know, the relationships were just kind of long and drawn out, and the guys just, I didn't break up with them. They broke up with me. And so I was like, screw men. I mean, forget them. They're just kind of... The, the, the family of origin you came from. Heartless. <laughs> yeah, well, That's pretty much all relationships uh, until people get married end by somebody leaving. Right. Yeah. That's the way relationships go. And most people, humans don't react to that by being devastated. They get it back together. They well, they're, sue. They, they're temporarily they, devastated. They mourn and the loss. They move on. Yeah, you and I yeah. had some problems, but Adam. Yeah. Yeah. And But we even even we got on eventually, Yes. 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 Okay. Not really, but yeah. yeah well, yes. Yeah, is that why she chose the uh, the nun? Well, the point is, there's something very, very, something's wrong. Let me ask you this, Drew, and we'll take some calls. Kevin, you weigh in too. All right. The point. It's starting uh, to come up with this theory that 
a certain amount of people just aren't really people. They're <laughs> Ro- just sort robots? of there. They're just kind of there in order to keep my life interesting no, that, and busy. That yeah, is that, your that's what I think. No they don't know what's going on. The they don't know where they are. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what compels them or motivates them. I understand that that's wrong. frustrating and that feels empty and, and meaningless, but they themselves have But here's what I'm saying, that. Drew. Do, does someone need to be the product of abuse or some sort of... Um, wholesale abuse or no. some if it doesn't always have to be the family of origin or can't yes. just sometimes somebody just be a little bit slow a little bit dull walk around a little bit of an ether haze not exactly yes. sure what's going on yes yes maybe that's teresa no no but here's the truth all right here's the, my, we have to give her some advice teresa go with this guy if you have a good relationship with him you went to a nun to hide out from dealing with the loss of relationships that's not a good reason to be a nun if you, want, if you want to be in relationships, here's a guy. This is fine. It's okay to be in relationships. But really, go talk to your sister. What would she be? Mother Superior? Yeah. About, <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to I mean, picture the flying nun. No, you think of Sound of Music. Oh, Sound of Music. Right? That's right. I'm ever Yeah. Okay. Edelweiss. Yeah, you... <laughs> Whoa. Oh, you, that's good. Uh, okay. No, I was just say you want to go into it uh, from the right the right place. I mean, if you, yeah, if you're this, which reason you're going to dedicate your life to something? Yeah. yeah, you don't want to do it because you're you're hiding from uh, potential bad relationships. Right. Very Thank good. You. Very good. <laughs> Thank not, you. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. What? Reason. She'll be fine one way or the other. She never. She's not going to know it. Kevin just wrapped it up very nicely. I know he did. He did good. He did. He's smart. Nice yeah. kid. Sharp kid. This Kevin. <laughs> Hannah. Hello. You're uh, 15? Yes. What's up? Hi. Well, um, I've been masturbating, like, since I was really little, and I don't know why. But I'm, like, a sex addict, and it's like an urge for me to masturbate. Like, I get the urge when I'm in school. Anywhere I am, I just feel the urge, and I, like, have a lot of one-night stands, and, like, it's like a high for me. It's like... Right. Are you doing other drugs? Um, sometimes, yes. Do you but come from a his, is it what what you want to bet on this one? Huh? You want to do a little gambling? I don't know my mm-hmm. my uh, money with me, but yeah, yeah. All right, all right. We haven't done this in a long time, and this is a good way because uh, I thought for a second we we're going to get to three calls this first twenty minute <laughs> break, but I realized this is a good way just to keep it to two. <laughs> Kevin, you have a dollar on you? I have, yeah, yeah. a few singles. You got one you can lend, Drew? Uh, sure. Hey, Kevin, will, uh, Adam will spot me. All right. Yeah. Uh, alias, everyone, Sunday nights, uh, sure. 9 o'clock, nine ABC. O'clock. Uh, Drew, I got two bucks. Yeah, I'll give you, you one. We, we haven't gambled in a long time. I know. Just that's, that's good one of, one of the other things we've forgotten to do on this show. Uh, Kevin, what's jacket. the deal? In your jacket? I, yeah, I get, uh, at the break, I'll grab it, but I'm in. Uh, at the break? <laughs> I'll grab the jacket. <laughs> you know, get there. Okay. Go, get, go ahead, go get it. <laughs> Tough crowd. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was out in the car. It's really <laughs> white. <laughs> uh, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to gamble on... Hannah's past. <clears throat> now, I'll, uh, I'll explain it is in the this. Car, Adam. And by the, in the car, my oh, okay, it's in the car. When do you guys take my wallet? Mm, no, yeah, it must be in the car. I'm in though. I'll, I'll send it. She's good for it. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, Anderson. I know this is crazy, but is there air conditioning you can turn on in here? It seems very hot in here. It's a little warm. Uh, or, uh, I, I'll check it. I'm on an AC guy. It's on the fritz. Oh, thank okay. you, Anderson. And don't say Dilio anymore, please, Adam. Thanks. Why? Dilio? No. It, it rings Nolio. in my head. What? Nolio. Nolio means no to Dilio. Uh, See, I, I have to I have to be the ambassador. Well, if you went from Dilio to Dilio, what's the Nolio? Hmm. Okay, let's 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 just start. Stay on track here. Just <laughs> nobody talk but me. Hmm. Even I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to think what I want to okay. say, but not actually say it. Here we go. And go. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. good. That would have been good. <laughs> So here's what we're doing. We are gambling on Hannah's past. What has turned her into a 15-year-old who is uh, constantly masturbating, who's obsessed with sex, who's having one-night stands? We, we think we can predict it was something to do with her past. Drew, go first. Um, just just a tr- sort of a trifecta. Drug-addicted parents, or least drug-addicted dad, for sure. Mm-hmm. A lot of goof-off drug addicts hanging around with sexually abused by one of those guys. At, at, at a young age. What age? Uh, Sort of exposed to a lot of stuff, and maybe finally like around ten, eleven. Okay. Something. All right. I'm gonna go with uh, sexual abuse. Um, uh, weird, uh, weird stepbrother. All right. Oh ho. That's good. Okay. That's good. Yeah. 
I was now, gonna, now you can go with nothing, by the way, which right, is which sometimes good money. Might be smart. You guys went uh, full tilt. Um, I would say maybe, uh, yeah, possible uncle, possible a lot of maybe some some casual drugs around the house mm-hmm. that uh, influence. Did you take any? Or you... I would think possibly at first contact with the parents, contact high, and then maybe the hey kid <laughs> come over here take it out, and uh, slowly got involved. Oh right, well, how sure. about? Uh, any physical abuse, or are we just sticking with the sexual? Go, go physical. It's it's easier. You know what? None, none of us, neither of us took it, so you at least get it by default. Right, right. You get it by default. Okay. We'll give you that. All right, I'll Hannah, go I'll go physical. Yes. I went with a very low percentage guess, by the way. What's uh, tell us about your past? Okay, well, when I was younger, um, my mom thinks that I was molested by my dad, but I don't remember at all. How old do they think you were when that happened? Um, very young, when I was very little. Was your dad, dad a drug addict? Um, no, he was an alcoholic. Uh, Where's my bourbon? Alcoholic. Stepdad or real dad? Real dad. Mm-hmm. And my mom, well, he used to beat my mom, too. Mm, got the violence in there. Yeah. And, hmm. Kevin's like Nostradamus with that physical <laughs> abuse. <laughs> when my stepdad got in the picture, he used to beat me when I was, Younger, like that's not pointing at Kevin like he's a genius. I gave him physical abuse, we gave it to him. Yeah, I gave it to him. You said, I'll let him have it. I'll take it. That's two dollars. Keep going, huh? What happened when you were like 11, 10, 11? Yeah, when I was about 11, I used to live with my dad, and my stepmom started giving me drugs. She started feeding me pills, and true. And uh, Kevin. That's whenever I started doing drugs. What kind, right. of, what kind of pills? Just like different. narcotics and hmm. stuff like that. Any, uh, I'm trying to, trying to get my dollar back. Any stepbrothers? Mm-mm. I only had a little stepbrother. Aha! Did you do anything to him? Um, no. All right. Hmm. Sorry. All right, Hannah. So there's lots of reasons. When you ask, I don't know why I'm this way, you've got all the reasons in the world to have sexual compulsion, and then you add that addictive gene in, and you add the fact that you are an addict. Well, I'm also bipolar, so. Uh, yeah, well, God knows with what you've been through, and who knows what the biological effects of all these chemicals have and been. And you're living in Florida, so it's all been compound by the uh, humidity and the stupid people and the waffles. Are you in northern or southern Florida? <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter yes, anymore. It does. It's all Florida now. She must, Florida. Central Florida, okay. okay. Which is northern It's Florida. all bad. But Hannah, this is something that really requires treatment. You, you sexualize all your feelings right now, and at 15, that's your only way of managing any feelings that are your own, that are self. And that is a highly dysfunctional and very destructive way to go through life, and it's progressive. Not only the progressive consequences for all these sexual behaviors, but you're also an opiate addict. And that's oh, progressive. Narcotic addict. Oh. And no. that's progressive, too. So although, although at 15, you don't feel the withdrawal and all that business so much as you will when you're 18 and 20. It's the same disease, and it's extremely powerful, and it is destructive and progressive, and you've got to do something about this. All right, baby. Hey, but good times, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, listen. Stop having sex. Don't get pregnant. Okay. Do you hear me? Are you on some kind of birth control? Um, no. Depo shot, okay? That's yeah. for you. I'm not going to take birth control. One thing no. it doesn't do is a side effect. I don't know. What do we, listen, how, can all... Here's my point. Can we really do anything about the Hannahs of the world? Yes. At, at a certain point, they, certain... Were, they were victims, and now... What kind of... Are they they're on the war or? path. Mm, Pro, what, what, oh, I guess they're serious, round, round her up and contain In containment. Need, she needs to be contained. Maybe we need, like, uh, camps. Yeah, the, the oh mil- yeah, military camp. I told you I was gonna take uh, I was gonna take over one of the Hawaiian Islands yeah. or some maybe the, the entire Philippines. I, say it's not bad. I was gonna send uh, Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad over there. <laughs> no, do, no, and, do what? Uh, what were no, they no, no, no. They masters of ceremony. I just start sending kids over there. No, just no start but not that kind of camp. Over there. Not that kind of camp. You need, Reconditioning. You need, you need like uh, John Schwartzkopf or something. You need, you need a, like a boot camp. Yes. Well, I just want them off the con- out of the country is oh, really what I'm looking happy. for. All right. But here's the deal. Hannah's going to get pregnant in a couple of years. Couple well, no, years. no, no. Sorry. A couple of weeks. Couple of weeks. Yeah. And then... That's young, too. 15. And that'll make you fat, Hannah. Believe me. Trust yeah. me. And then she's going to get pregnant again around 17, <sighs> 17 and a half. And, and then, then her kids will call us in about 8, 10 years. That's right. And if I pick up the phone, I'll kill myself. <laughs> I really will. <laughs> hey... Mark my words. Write this down on your calendar. If I, if, if 13, 14 years from now, when I have to talk to <laughs> Hannah's kids, I will officially put the shock <laughs> out of my mouth. It'll be great ratings because we'll do it on the air. <laughs>
I'll be stupid and do it in the first break, though, and everyone will tune out after that. I'll, yeah. We'll see. You know what we'll do? We'll sell it until the end of the show where I actually kill myself. <laughs> and you as, a, you as a physician, yeah, can, can actually put the document. stethoscope to my chest sign and the death yeah. sign it. Right. Yeah. All right. Kevin Weissman, our guest tonight from Alias. Thank you. Sunday nights, ABC, big hit, 9 o'clock. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. It's Loveline. Kevin Weissman is our guest tonight. <clears throat> yes. He's from Alias. Yes. Nine o'clock on uh, Sunday nights. Eight on Central. ABC. Plays Marshall, the techno geek. And um, I'll buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Even with what I got going tonight. Yeah. I mean, you, you got... Uh, <laughs> I mean, you probably are you a techno geek? You're not a techno uh, geek. Yeah, really. no. I mean, I'm computer literate and I have surround sound for my Laker games and. Uh, but I wouldn't say I'm as proficient as young Marshall. When you were in uh, Gone in 60 Seconds, I was. Yeah, I had a small. Most of my role was cut out, but I did end up in there for a little bit. But I uh, I studied the DVD, so I yeah. saw. No, I didn't. But okay. um, what'd you think of my work? I I uh, I'm a fan of um, Nicolas Cage, and mm -hmm. especially uh, a lot of the gay porn that he's been doing. Uh, oh, lately. I don't know. No, I mean, I'm talking about his movies, oh, really. Yeah. I, I, I want him punished for doing crap over the last, yeah. uh, like, ten years. What happened? But no one will punish him. Yeah. No one will punish him. And by the way, what kind of... Uh, but I I like going and see... I love those kind of movies just because yeah. I like to... I like them like I like bad food. Right. It's just... Uh, it's, it kind of... It's there, it's loud, it comes in, and then it goes. Well, it kind of is what it is. Like, like McDonald's is not good food. It's no. McDonald's. But, but you know what you're getting. You know what you're getting, and if you, if you have a craving for it, it's going to work. It's like, yeah. I always say Twinkie is not a good dessert. It's a Twinkie, but you know what it is, and it right. tastes like what it tastes so like. a particular experience. And there's... Uh, one could say that with the, uh, for a lot of Nick Cage movies. <laughs> to be really good, I mean. Right. But here's what drives me insane. I mean, we're going right back to the uh, right back to the calls. But I was watching uh, I was watching a little TiVo tonight. I'm always curious what uh, how many stars they give uh, movies. Mm. Uh, Con Air, what three that? three stars, three stars to Con Air, and Defending Your Life, Albert Brooks, three stars. Now the whole star system's out the window for me. Yeah, Con Air, Con Air. This piece, this flaming turd of a gay porn film <laughs> with Nick Cage in it. Yeah. Yes, yes. He's a decorated military veteran who got followed out to a parking lot by a bunch of bikers who tried to pull a knife on him and stab him, but as soon as he turns the knife on them and kills them, then it's to the judge's gavel. Guilty! Guilty! Oh, yeah, sure. All right. No one saw the bikers follow him out to the parking lot. No, okay, he's guilty. He's doing time. found guilty Gay charged. porn. This is gay porn. A lot of guys walking through the desert in slow motion in tank tops. <laughs> It is gay porn, this stuff. And and to give it the same amount of stars is something like defending your life. I like Albert Brooks. It's all out the window now. Now why bother with the stars? You're you're giving you're giving flaming turds the same star rating. You're giving nice, thoughtful bodies of work here. Ridiculous. It's all out the window. Why why do the stars? I'd like to I'd like to find the guys in charge of the star Let's system. Get Albert Brooks TV. in here to talk about yeah. this. Yeah, how do they? Uh, it's like it's like Nielsen box. How, how do you? How is it accurate? How is something? Who, I, I don't know. Who's, it's, who's it's deciding? Very, very arbitrary. Very arbitrary. So you should create your own system. That's right. That no one would pay attention to. <laughs> I mean, as a matter of fact, for all you know, I may have had it going for ten years. <laughs> oh, now uh, you see. I didn't get the book. <laughs> it didn't get send off me, the send ground. Me, send me a copy. All right, Drew Albert Brooks not coming in here. Yeah. He's a, he's a big star. Yeah. Not that Kevin's not a big star. No, that's right. But Albert, he uh, he's been around for a while. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's not. You never see him do anything. Mm -hmm. Carl, yeah, you're 18. Yeah, what's up? Uh, like every time me and my girlfriend have sex, she'll uh, like cry like right in the middle of it. Mm. Good times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's not not a great sign. No, usually means something's up. But right in the middle or at the end? Like like right in the middle. So at the two minute mark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's everyone just agree with me? <laughs> Why isn't life this way? 
your god at him. That's why. That's right, buddy. All right. So, do you do you ask her what it's about? Yeah, and they're like that's like that's like part of the problem because every time I bring it up, she'll like change the subject. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's not a good sign. Hmm. How old is she? Seventeen. Is she there uh, with you right now? No. All right. And uh, she doesn't want to discuss it. No. Hmm. Do you think she likes sex? Uh, I think so. I think she might have like some physical abuse in the background. Physical abuse. Yeah. Or oh. maybe it's physical pain that you're providing at that particular moment. Mm, no, I don't think so. Usually it'll be a stop before. Because crying. that'll be like yeah, ouch or yeah. move over, or whatever. Uh, how long have you been with her? Uh, about six months. How long is the relationship? <laughs> how How is the relationship going? Uh, it's been fine except for this whole crying during sex thing. And as every time you have sex, she cries. Uh, yeah, pretty much. How long have you been having sex with her? About three months. Right. And you you finished though, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So, you guys are great. Especially she's teenage guys. <laughs> she's crying. Do you stop? It's probably actually making him make him orgasm faster. <laughs> or maybe it's because it takes him less than two minutes. That's why. All right. You so? No, but uh, Carl. Yeah. Um, I think you should tell her that this is uh, something that disturbs you quite a bit, and that uh, you don't feel good about being intimate with her when she's crying and that if she doesn't feel comfortable discussing it with you that at least she should discuss it with somebody a therapist or something who, yeah who may have a little training yeah it's no way to go through life because it, it really it's not it's not a trivial symptom it's something real sometimes people the only time it's really trivial if somebody's particularly a woman is crying during sex is if she has sort of a release with orgasm some women as part of that we either laugh or or cry but this is not that this is as you get involved in the moment pow she's crying it's, it's overwhelming to her in some way maybe re-triggering a trauma from the past or maybe she's identifying some feelings she's having about you that maybe aren't congruent with the activity you guys are involved in sometimes that happens what's that mean that means she doesn't like him anymore oh. and that the sex thing is that reminds her of that mm, nah nah i don't, I don't think she that's gonna engage in the act and, and she's been she's been crying throughout it, it really, to me, it's, it's re, reliving some trauma. I mean, it pretty yeah. much has to be that. I, I do like the idea that uh, the guy finishes every time, though. Yeah. Ricky? Yes. You're 25? Yes. What's up? Um, I just got a quick question for you. I'm going out with my younger brother's ex-girlfriend. She's 19, and they have a son together. Oh, that's mm-hmm. nice. How long has she been his ex? About four years. How does your uh, brother feel about that? Well, he says he's okay with it. All right. The only thing he's got, if he's about his his son's part, because he's his son's four years old. But he's, it's weird. Rick, Ricky is his girl is the is the uncle of his girlfriend's son. Yeah. And wait a minute, you're, how old is your brother? He's twenty one. And the son's four. Yeah. Seventeen. All right. Welcome to Love Line. Come on. And Love I have a daughter who's a year old. All of right. course. Where is she? You, you wouldn't want to be left out. Where is she at? She lives with me. All and right. Where is her mom? Uh, her mom's not in the picture no more. Mom left the child behind. Yeah. Where'd she go? Mm, um, she's at her at her mom's house. She's mm. just gone. She's got problems. This woman, <laughs> serious problems. The mm. only question I would have is, um, I just feel a little scared of, um, uh, my my, well, my girlfriend. Let's just call her that. Uh, she's. Taking it too serious, she's like moving a little faster than what I am. She wants more bogus. of a relationship. She's giving yeah. you the, the, yeah. the goo goo eyes. No, it's just bogus calling. Yeah. And then every time my brother's yeah. over, yeah. Here, Mason, jar. Mason, jar. Yeah. Mason jar. Mason jar. Yeah. Mason jar. I got, I got flat affect at yeah. a certain point. Yeah, just get right to it. Right? Ricky, we don't believe you. You don't believe me? No. No. Something happened. Something happened in your tone, your voice, or something. Also, the girlfriend's at her, his, his, the mother of his child, who has abandoned the child with him, is at, his, at her mom's. Yeah. Wait a minute. That could yeah. be. It would not. Sorry, Rick. We don't believe you anymore. You're saying total, yeah. total bogus call. Yeah, you fell off, buddy. For what? To entertain himself? I don't know. You had it going for a minute there, Ricky. Hmm. But you fell off, buddy. Sorry. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> You're done, Ricky. You're done. It started good because it was sort of convoluted, yeah, and yeah. there was kids involved, and it was slightly intriguing that he was dating, and he was making it his younger brother, and he wasn't saying it was my older brother, and he was going to kick my ass. Yeah, you right. know, it, wasn't, it didn't have all the pitfalls of a bogus oh, call. Gosh. I'm you know? impressed with how quickly you guys seized well, Drew, upon the scene. Drew seized it, and it was that one sentence where he started talking, and it looked like he was reading it, or he didn't, it well, was then, no affect. There he was, didn't care. Here, here's the thing. Women do not abandon their children and then live around the corner. Right. A, B, B, and the the mother would have taken. Yeah, he had no question. 
He had, right. was trying to think of what the question was while we right. when we asked That's him what the what question was, and that was right. it. There, and, no question. And, and what's the screening process here? We need to get. Well, well they never quite. Well, he said he had a, a question. Ended up <laughs> not being a question. Right. And and the part where it was like, geez, your uh, your ex doesn't want to see the kid, huh? Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. She lives with her mom around the corner. So mm, no. No. She, no. She have to be incarcerated yes, in a junkie. Right. Jason. Hi. You're 19. Yes, I am. Let's uh, let's see. You've never been able to come with your girlfriend. Hmm. Uh, not my girlfriend, but any girl in general. I've just never been able to. How many any girls have there been? Um, about. 10, 15. You're gay. 10 or 15, really? Yeah. Never sex. I'm a virgin still. What are you, what are you doing now? Hand jobs? Hand jobs are oral. Oral, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, hang on a second. What happens? Do you go, just, it goes back, it's flaccid again? Um, it, just, it stays hard, but just, it. She gives up. Low jobs, I just don't feel, I don't feel anything. She gives up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the penis sort of outlasts uh, the mouth. Mm. The <laughs> pen is mightier than the mouth. <laughs> Uh, ba, 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 ba. we got to take a quick break. Oh, we'll get back with uh, Jason because uh, this is something that guys, there's a, I don't know what percentage of guys can't have an orgasm, but we're going to figure this out right. through these means right. is what I mean. All right. All right. Kevin Weissman is here from uh, Alias, 9 o'clock, ABC, Sunday nights. We'll be right back. Hello? Who's this? Uh, this is Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. Loveline. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, Loveline, I'm Adam Carolla, that is Dr. Drew, Kevin Weissman is our guest tonight. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. So we were going to finish with Jason and why he's never been able to have an orgasm during oral sex, which is just some guys. That's right. That is just some guys. Some guys can't have it during oral and intercourse. Some can't during just oral. Some with both. And some with just intercourse can't. Well, let's see if we can break down the percentages here. <laughs> All right. This is a guess. This is a guess, but you and I always guess the same amount. All right. I'll, I'll be the timer. All right. So how many guys can't have orgasm during oral sex or intercourse? Well, no. I, I, I don't want to... Let's okay, just, okay. Number for that. How many guys just flat out can't have an orgasm? They have to finish themselves or something. Yeah, you know, just say, uh, let's just say flat out cannot do it with contact with a woman. In, in a woman. Yeah. Uh, and again, these are guys, let's just say, let, I don't want to count 14-year-olds. Right. Let's, let's just yeah. say like 16 right. to yeah. whatever, 40. 3%. 3%? Yeah. I'd say it could be 5%. Could be. I was going to say 3 to 5. But yeah, you're right. No, it is, because you don't, you don't know any of these guys. Yeah. Although right. they, don't, they don't have vanity plates made up like can't come. <laughs> <laughs> or anything like that. They don't like to advertise. Like, there's go, no windbreaker. Uh, I'm going to go 2.9%. There you go. Anything right. under than Kevin's I'm... got it. Yeah, I, I'd, yeah. I'd, like, I'd the say... The price is right here. Yeah. Somewhere between 0 and 5% on that one. Okay. All right, now the guys who cannot go either using the mouth or the or the girl's hand. You know, something other than intercourse. 15%. 10%? Yeah, 10, I'd 15. say between 10 and 15%. Because, uh, yeah. Often the hand, the girl with the hand doesn't really necessarily no, know do what that. she's doing. Yeah. And you right. Do some guidance. There's some guys that that, that contact just doesn't... Mm. Yeah. It just, just the, doesn't you, what's shake usually the tree. The, the reasoning for that. It's just, it's just uh, maybe some psychological, some biological. It's just that's that we're just figuring out what is, what the percentage not the wise. Right. So somewhere between ten and fifteen percent of the guys, just uh, it's not going to do unless it's in the vagina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my theory about those guys that I'm putting together with <laughs> the help of my passionate, passionate, <laughs> passionate partner, Dr. Drew, is those guys are just they're so horny that they got to get in. Right. <laughs> Like, it's not yeah. going to do. Like, I've talked to these guys, and, you know, I love a BJ. I understand. I love a BJ. Yeah. Huge. And wait, getting, wait, I love getting them, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, no. I love a BJ. I really do. And when I talk to my friends who don't like. You're breaking a song here in a second. Oh, I love a BJ. <laughs> no. When I talk to my friends, you know who I am. When I find something that doesn't. Somebody doesn't like the same thing I like, I get angry at them. Oh, yes. Like yeah. when I got a friend who yeah. likes confetti cake instead of pie. Ugh. I want to take a swing at them. Okay. Same with the BJs. But you know what these guys always tell me? And, and Drew, being a passionate man. I'll back you up. I'll, you back me up on this. 
when they get a BJ, it's like almost it's it's a distraction. It's right. like the it's not uh, the real thing. Yeah, they're just cleansing their palate before the yeah, meal. Yeah. And the problem is they got to put it somewhere, mm. and the mouth ain't the final right. parking Friendship. spot they for the penis. Be, they have to be physical. They have to do some some yeah, movement. It's like you can't possibly. Use. And it's, it's mm. like no, that's it's like they that. they need a vagina. It's like right. they need intercourse. They're getting a BJ now. Where's the intercourse? Where right. is it? I'm distracted by it. I must find mm. it. Mm. And that's that's what mm. goes on I with about half of those guys. Yeah, your visuals are very helpful actually right now. Thank you. I wish everyone could, could see what you're doing. We've thought this. We've thought for quite some time people should have television cameras. Yeah, on. I'm actually so have, can I'm, see the bobbing head action. I'm actually in Drew. <laughs> that's that's how big. That's how, well, that's how graphic <gasps> this demonstration is. So uh, okay, so that's about that's about ten to fifteen percent, right? Yeah. And then what's left? Is what? there anything left? Mm -hmm. Can't during just intercourse. Can do just only during oral sex. Oh, okay. that's another five percent again. Yeah, it's probably about the same yeah. that can just yeah do it yeah whatever the first one right, was. Right, right. All right, so we good? Yeah. All right. We come up with the same numbers you and I. You want to comment on this one real quick? Mm, Matt. Matt. Yeah. You're uh, 27. Yes. What's up? Uh, you're uh, you're talking about Nicolas Cage movies. Uh, he's doing gay porn so far. <laughs> well, just for the last ten years, really. Well, I'm. Um, Pretty much asking you uh, what's your take on wind talkers because I'm a Native American and uh, originally I want to see it. Oh, you're Navajo. Yeah, because I'm I'm, 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 uh, about yeah, Navajo, I'm one thirty second Chippewa. That's what gives me my tenacity. But when I first heard the title, I thought it was about a guy who communicated through farting, <laughs> and I was like, I'm I'm so on with this. And then I realized it was, wasn't about that. World War II. It, it's that's the code fun. code the Navajo, yeah, Navajo code that. breakers and uh, from uh, World War II. Yeah. It looked all right. I mean, the commercials looked okay and everything. But I heard it was good. I haven't seen it, but I, I heard it, like, Nick Cage gives a good performance. Way, Pe people don't know, or I guess a lot of people don't know, that they had to use the Navajo language. Is uh, World War Two? Yeah, code. yeah, for code because uh, the uh, Japanese and the Germans uh, weren't real fluent in Navajo. If the Germans had the American Indians, they would have killed them <laughs> so mm. a long time ago. Right, and, and the Japanese would have too, actually. So we had them around. We didn't kill our Indians. We just round them up, keep them in place. We can keep an eye on them. <laughs> I think he was referring to the big budget Nick Cage extravaganza. Right. Well, I guess I guess it was okay. I guess it was not a John Woo film. Or it was a John it was Woo film? It was definitely a John Woo oh, film. Oh, okay. Well, it had to suck if it was a John Woo film. But. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy does gay porn. Well, basically, all the Navajos, all the, basically all Native Americans watched that movie. So. Oh, all right. At least when I was at the box office. All right, well, that's, that's good for like 4500 bucks or something <laughs> in terms of gross receipts. All right, well, I'm sure that movie was okay. Eight screens. It was on eight screens. All, um, it was a big release. It was big. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch right, that when I get home. All right, tonight. Wind Talkers. Right. But, uh, I, thought you, I, I assumed you meant it was people that talked about farts. That's Wind Talkers. No, and no, I thought that's how they communicate. With farts. I with farts, yeah. So, so like John, with, the, the John Woo, the, the director, <laughs> does gay porn and needs to be blamed for all this uh, retarded stuff. Yeah. Did he do Broken Arrow, too? I think so. Uh, that's all he does. It's, it's really it's just stuff for 13-year-old uh, guys to beat off to. What a hack that John Wu is. Jesus. Shouldn't he get some kind of uh, crippling uh, brain disease or something? I don't want to see him killed. Just stop making those horrible movies. Please. Kelly, what's up? Hey, Kelly. Hello. Hi, Kelly. Hi, how's it going? 17. Good. What's up what's there? Up? Yes. Um, I just had a question about my relationship with my boyfriend and kind of the testing that goes on with relationships, you know. And from a guy's point of view, I was asking... If it's my turn to kind of make the next move. What's happening? Um, or not happening? Well, when we first got together, we spent every single day together. We, and you know, I really liked that about everything. And we until you slept with him. No, <laughs> no, not exactly. And we haven't done anything like that. And I kind of miss that about the whole thing too. Oh, he but, you wanted you wanted something physical. I would like something physical, but first of all, I'd like to see him a little bit more. He talks to me every day on the phone and stuff, and so I'm just wondering if it's kind of him making the question that, well, let's see if she'll make the next move and come and see me. Well, no. Mm -hmm. why, uh, wh why don't you see him? How far away does he live? Well, he doesn't live very far away, but it's just we don't go to the same school or anything, and no. it's just I don't. You don't, don't know men, if I men are not playing a chess game in relationships. Yeah, and you don't want to. If you do the constant calling, and uh, it's, it's going to drive him farther away. I mean, that would be my... Uh, 
Yeah, like I don't, I don't call him that much because he always gets the phone. Be- he always calls me. So he's and, the one calling her. And okay. you, you know what? Can we want to call him? Right now? Because it, it, it's hard to figure out what's going on with him. But he's still making contact, but he's not showing the enthusiasm he had before. Not, not now. We'll call him from. Yeah. Well, I'll call him from my office tomorrow. So where's <laughs> he going to be around noon LA time? <laughs> At school. At school. Yeah. yeah. He got a cell phone. Oh, I'm on his cell. I mean, this is just my one and only question, is that, you know, I just kind of, we had our homecoming dance and everything, and I went with him, and we triple dated and stuff, and it just didn't seem like when it's just me and him, and we go out, you yeah. know? Well, he, guys do this. Trying to impress the friends. Trying yeah. to impress the friends. Yeah, but and some, I don't want to seem clingy. I don't want to be, like, all hands-on with him and stuff. But and he doesn't I, like I, I, if I had to, uh, Kelly, you're giving us very little to go on here, but if I had to make a bet... If I had to guess, I would guess that he's probably interested in someone else at the same time. No! Whoa. And that, that's sort of why his enthusiasm really? is there. Really? That, that's what you're sending her off with? He's I, also I, 17. Because I think I'm, I I think I'm right. Because I think I'm right. Because unless we can talk to him to figure out what's going on, why would a 17-year-old be completely hell-bent and then fade suddenly? And yeah, he, I, I don't he, know. He's, he's got another he's another got gal's caught his kinda, eyes. Yeah, he's kind of interested. That's what thing. happened when you're in high school. You get the wandering eye. Well, yeah. actually, you still do when you're in your 30s, too. But um, That's true. Kelly, <laughs> I want I want to say something to Kelly. When well, let's come, come back. back. All right, we'll come back. Kelly, hang on. All right, Kevin Weissman is here tonight from uh, Alias. He plays uh, Marshall. Marshall Flinkman, techno geek. Yes. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, guys, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Call the Dateline. Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Call the Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. One eight seven seven eight eight nine date. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Doctor Drew. Hey everybody, Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Kelly, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Kevin Weissman's our guest tonight from uh, Alias, 9 o'clock ABC. Thank you. Sunday nights. I like the uh, musical uh, selection that leads us into each. Mm. Yeah. Just want to tell you that. Yeah, it's like we're doing radio. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's nice. And then the radio be- part begins. Yeah, no, the singing. They don't sing, but I like the music. Kelly? Yep. Yeah, so we're about done with you. Except? Well, we think you're nice, and I, I feel bad leaving you off with Drew saying that uh, your man is two-timing you. <laughs> I'm not really, I didn't say he's necessarily thinking, thinking too much. thinking about yeah, someone thinking. else. He wants to get you know, further into this. We need to call him, I think, is what you're... That's the only way we could know for sure. But Well, I, just, I was just asking, you know, if... A girl was to do this to you and just kind of come out straight out with you and just be like, "I want to spend more time with you." And um, okay, Kelly, what mm-hmm. usually happens at this stage is the girl goes, "What are we doing? You're having the talk. What's going to happen with this relationship? What are yeah. we up to here?" And that's perfectly normal. But for the most part, when it comes to men, whatever you do doesn't matter. Don't yeah. read the Cosmo that somehow you can change how men are or alternate their behavior or manipulate them. You can't. We don't. Yeah. No, you right. can't. You can clarify and you can set ground rules, but you can't somehow magically manipulate yeah. them into where you want them to be. If he's got, you know, the eye on another, then he's got that. Then there's nothing you can. And do. you can say to him, "Well, that's fine, yeah. but that's not what I want from this relationship." And and that's that. Or you can say, "All right, I have to accept that, and we'll just kind of date." Well, and here's so the thing about what's going on. men too. Women look at men like. Like we have the same brain they do, and we we, we don't. don't. Ours we is don't. much bigger and more complicated. <laughs> no, uh, not no. It's bigger, but it's not not. It's it's more it's more complicated when it comes to math and engineering. We don't think about relationships like you guys do. No, it's if here's the thing. If we're in, it, let's just break it into cars. If there's a car we like, we want it. Period. Now, is do, it, do we it, care if our friends aren't into it that much, or no. the car was a little too cheap, or it was too easy to get? Now. All that's we know it. is the bottom line. I either want this or I don't want this. And that's it. Doesn't uh, all the other nuances that you chicks factor into a relationship? We don't. No. If this guy's into you, 
That's and you it. come to him and say, hey, I'd like to spend more time with you, and I'd like to sleep with you, and I'd like to... Whatever. Oh, great. Bring it on. Or? Or he ain't into you, right. and then he's going the other way. But here's but the thing. It sounds like You're not going to jinx it or change her. it. He's calling her every day, so... He's probably into her. Yeah. He's into her, but he, he's not into her. He, he, men do have a conscience, and they don't want to give the wrong impression. They mm-hmm. don't want to... You know, her to feel like she's exclusive, and he doesn't want to. You know, he's sort of toned it down a little bit. That's all. But women, you do not have to run from the truth. No, you will not affect the way this guy feels about you by telling Anything. telling him. Now, now, if you say you start talking about marriage and kids. You might freak him out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying you don't. Maybe don't say anything because you don't want to put the pressure. Yeah, by the same time, you start talking about murdering people or you know other things that men consider outside the box. Yeah, that'll freak him out too. Yeah, yeah. Even that's not really that marriage throw murder. Away. Not the same. Yeah. Not the same. Yeah, going to okay. throw same a plan. horny seventeen year old off the trail. <laughs> yeah. Amy, Hello? you're 25. Yes. What's up? Um, I just have a comment on. Um, the call you had earlier where you said that uh, women just don't leave their kids and go move around the corner. <laughs> um, my no, 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 no. That's not what we said, Amy. That's not what we that's said. That's not what we said. Well, we we may have said it, but... No, we clarified it. We we made it clear that you have to be profoundly effed up to do that. She said, Jan, in fact, said if she's a junkie, and and even then you'd visit. You'd or the or, the mo- the or her, the grandmother would, yeah. would yeah. be involved. Incarcerated in or right. junkie. Why? Okay. Did your mom abandon you? Oh, my mom abandoned me and left me with my alcoholic, abusive father. And what and, was his? Uh, what was her deal? Um, well, she's bipolar. <laughs> okay. Was she also an addict? No, she wasn't an addict. But when I was 11 years old, I was taken from my father because of all the abuse, and she got custody of me. And she waited until my dad settled up with the social security so that she could start collecting social security to support me. And then she threw me out at 13. Yeah. So I've been on the streets ever since I was 13, and she collected all that money. Mm. <laughs> yeah, she's I mean, a sounds like a dynamite. Yeah, profoundly, dynamite. profoundly. Your dad's a piece of work. Did she move around the corner, though? That was the kind of crux um, of the... Actually, yeah, she's, yeah, she's lived around the corner pretty much my whole life. <laughs> now, are you, um, you either have three kids or you're a lesbian? Which one is it? <laughs> I have three kids. You do? Yeah. Oh, You're I'm gonna good. kill myself. I have my third on the way. I'm doing oh, I'm I'm gonna kill myself. That will be even then. You'll have one more. <laughs> There'll be one less of me. Why is it? Why do you have to have three kids? <laughs> You're a disaster. I mean, it's not <laughs> not, not it's not your fault. But come on. You really you need three kids. You need three kids. Twenty five well, years old. What's wrong with having three kids? How do you because them? you're not in shape to raise people. How do you know that I'm not in shape to raise people? Because of your past. What happened to you? That you're I've horrible parents. I've gone through counseling, and my kids will never go through anything like I've gone through. Yeah, all right. How do you support yourself? I'm sorry? How do you support yourself? Um, well, I'm a house mom. I live with my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. How, does, how does he support himself? I'm sorry? How does he support himself? <laughs> Sugar he's daddy. He's not a wholesaler. He's a wholesaler, and he's the father of all three children? No. Um, no. Oh. Shocking. Where's dad? So your kids yeah. are your kids are going to go through some of this because they have abandoning dads, right? They don't have abandoned fathers, no. Where's the? How many dads do you have? Fathers. What's that? They see their fathers. How many fathers are there? Two. And the, there will be three? No, there's two. So, so the one, the two kids have the same dad? Mm-hmm. All right, and where's he? He's around the corner, and he sees my kids all the time. All right, he's a good guy? Yeah. Why'd you leave him? Um, Because I was in love with him. Really? What's the real reason? Come on. Because I wasn't in love with him. That's it, huh? He doesn't drink a little bit? I'm sorry? He doesn't drink a little bit? No. Amy, Amy. Come come on, baby. Come Come on, be straight up with us. No, him. Him. No, he didn't drink either. No drugs? No drugs. No pot. No pot. Just a straight guy who you had two straight kids guy. with and decided to get away from when you were, like, in your... Mid- after you've just mid-twine. been with him for a couple of years. I was with him for four years. All right. No reason to leave him. I didn't love him. Well, yo, you know, he may have been a nice guy. Yeah, it's possible. You're too nice, yeah, right? Nice mm. Too nice a guy. No, he's uh, too nice of a guy. Uh, no drinking, no abuse, right? I don't get any drinking or abuse from... My boyfriend now. All right, be careful, because you may fall out of love with him. <laughs> no, you know That's what I'm talking a, about? You see, Amy, the pattern? 
Yeah, I see the pattern. All right, but just whatever. be careful. All right, yeah. so here's the deal. God bless you. You've done some treatment. You're not going to F up your own kids. But no more. No, I'm not. Three's enough, all right? Oh, yeah, I know that. And, wh and why doesn't this guy marry you? You're pregnant. You got the two kids. He said that that's not in the plans. What? Well, why not? <laughs> We've been talking about it. Why not? Why not what? Why doesn't he want to get married? Nobody said anything about not getting married. Why doesn't he want to get about doing it? He said it wasn't in the plans. It's been in the plans. We just haven't done it. I thought oh, it, you, oh, said, it, you said he, he said it wasn't in the plans. Um, I don't recall saying that. All right. All right. So you guys are going to get married. Uh, most likely pretty soon. All righty, Very baby. Good. Mm. You take care. You too. Be take careful. care of those kids. No more after this one, right? Kaibosh. Kaibosh on the kids. Yeah. Now listen, here's the here's the deal. Here's the problem. The sad, sad reality is is twenty five year old chick probably shouldn't handle three kids anyway. Yeah. She should be, you know, have have, a, have have three, have the third one by the time you're thirty, thirty one, whatever. Right. Number one. Number two, as sad as it is, when you've had horrible abusive parenting like uh Amy this had. Amy has, that's it. There's certain things that you just sort of almost have to stay away from. And it doesn't mean you can uh, never be a parent. No. But three kids young is tough. And the, the story is always, well, I've turned it around. I'm not going to be anything like that. It's like, really? Where's uh And, oh, yes, you're not abusing your kid. Yeah, that's but good. But where's, uh, where's the dad? Yeah. And who's the new guy? And right. why aren't you guys married? Well, uh, What's going on? Now there's three well, here's kids. Here's the thing. You call because you hear your issue on the radio banditing mom i gotta call it i gotta talk about that right. okay so already there's something really understandably left behind from that abandoning mom and then secondly get defensive and angry when we push on reality yeah you shouldn't yeah. call because yeah. we're going to push on reality that's the whole deal here is we're trying to break uh, through right. denial she was doing all right but yeah. my my thing is i don't i look these people are victims and i look at them and, as victims until they start churning the kids out well and she also didn't uh take into consideration the kids when she was making her decision to leave when she fell out of love with yeah. the husband, and the guy seemed to be an upstanding. Yeah, that's right. I'm not saying that you got to stay in the relationship just because of the kids, but consider. You know what? Many times you should stay in a relationship yeah. just because of the kids. There's too way too much of this. Oh, I'm not a happy. I, you know, hey, you you forfeited all that when you had kids. Now right. your job is to raise healthy kids. That's your job. May yeah. not be the happiest job on earth. Make it work. Maybe go to counseling. Make it work. That's right. And the fact is, people the statistics on this are very clear that people after they get divorced are no happier when they remarry. Right. Than the relationship they started with. Grass is greener syndrome. That's right. You got any weed? Why am I so angry <laughs> now? You angry? I'm angry because I'm. I think it's hot in here. It is yeah, sure. that's what it is. It's, it's it's always it just hovers you guys, around. You uncomfortable. guys are getting me angry. Yeah, I'm starting to. Yeah. You're heating me up. Yeah. Let's get some air going. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's what I feel man. like. Ario? Yo. You're 21? That's correct. What's up? Well, okay, so my question is more of the theoretical variety. All right. So I'm 21, right. and there are two girls right now that I'm dating mm -hmm. parallel. Way to go. Mm -hmm. they, live, they live in different cities, and they don't really know of each other's existence. Wow! Mm -hmm. But, but... Um, I haven't, you know, explicitly told them that I'm dating two women. Have you explicitly told them that you're not? Um, no. Have your actions led them to believe that you're not? Mm -hmm. uh, you never sent the email that said you're the only one? No, no, nothing like that. Have you had any talk about what the nature of your relationship is? And no, nothing like that. Essentially, it's been, with one, it's been more physically based. How often do you see each other? Um, about twice a week with one and about twice a week with the other. And one you're having sex with and the other you're not? Um, having sex with both. Well, yes. not yet with one, but it's going to be getting there pretty quick. Uh, like probably this or next week. What's your question? So basically, is is that cool to do if if both of these both of these women are in their twenties, and so I'm not sure like as far as their state, as far as where they want to enter into a. Here's what I think. What what cities are they in? I mean, how far away are they? We're talking across the bay. Oh, all right, Oakland. Yeah. So it's sort of almost sort of academic. Cause they're not that far away. Mm. I mean, Drew, it'd be like you, you're living in Los Angeles, a girl lives in Santa Monica, or and one that lives Newport in Canoga Park right. or some big right. deal. Are you afraid of possibly running into one while you're with the other? Not a, no, that's really not an issue. It's more of just like a personal ethical question. And like Here's the reason you're having the problem. You're, you're not being honest with yourself. 
Okay. You're not being honest with yourself about what you think these women think is going on here. In your heart of hearts, you must know that at least you feel as though they think that this is a real intimate relationship. And you're not willing to sort of come to terms with that. And for that reason, you're not willing to have a discussion with them about what actually is going on in the relationship. So I have to initiate that discussion? No, I don't. But I think you better be honest about what, what you're feeling from them. Okay. And which is they're starting to, you know, sort of feel intimate and have a real relationship. And uh, and you're sort of, you know, you're you're being a little dishonest about that. I, it's one thing if they're saying, the you know, they're dating other guys, you know, yeah. but they, they're good. You know what that feeling is when they're starting to really get involved with and you. He thinks, you know, on paper that sounds like a great thing, but the guilt starts to yeah, and, and, of course, when the day is done, you go, well, I didn't say we were the oh, exclusive. Right. But you know what? You, you kind of know what's going on here. And yeah, you haven't said, you haven't lied, but it's not ethical to delude people uh, mislead them by your actions but at the same time maybe they don't want they don't maybe these girls don't want to be exclusive maybe he's being you know, presumptuous he, but he's feeling he's beginning to feel that they do and if, if he's wants to be ethically proper he better bring it up and I don't, I don't probably wanna, lose one or both i don't <laughs> want to go too far off on a chag here but my my, my wheels are turning yeah now as, I, I, right. as we speak about this right. and here's what i think is going on in this society yeah because I would argue that if you're sleeping with somebody consistently, consistently having sex with a person, that it's implied that well, you're... Well, certainly for women it's implied. Guys yeah. kind of feel like they're getting away with something. You know, they, if they don't no, I, I, it. No, no, I know yeah. women feel that way, but if I was an attorney, I would yeah. argue that yes. this was implied yes. that you guys were exclusive yeah. because you're having sex with my client twice a week. But yeah. speaking of attorneys... Here's an interesting thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna link these all together. Yeah. I wonder, and I think it's gonna be the undoing of this society. <laughs> we have gotten away from doing what is right, and we found ways to go around the laws and trick yeah. everything with the word. It's ourselves. the attorneys do this, the Bible thumpers do this, the cops do it. It's all turned into this. Fifteen year olds do it with virginity, right? right. All a technicality. And I'm wondering, it, it see here's my problem. And this is my problem with religion in many, many cases, which is, oh, no, technically I beat it out, which is uh, you had oh, the, sex. The, the Jews aren't supposed to be doing any work on Saturday and they can't they, they can't fire up the uh, washer and the dryer. But if we put it on a timer and we don't actually flip the switch ourselves, then we're still uh, celebrating our Sabbath because the timer did it. It was not, you know, they get into all these technicalities Then your whole life becomes a technicality, which is his life, which is um, I'm 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 dating two girls i'm going to be screwing two girls any minute now i never said yeah. i never said yeah. i never said the attorneys it's a divorce the whole thing it's all that it's like listen i know it's not right i know it's not right but you know what we could do this you didn't sign this or you did sign this or yeah sure it was four in the morning and there's nobody around and there's no possible but it was a four-way stop but you still rolled through it you said you're getting a ticket and this is what our society has now become and now we can beat everything on a technicality sure my client is guilty but you seized the videotape of him raping and murdering his victims without a search warrant so therefore we have to throw it out of court and now he's walking the street and everyone applauds I can't stand this part of society, and this is this well, is why I lost wish... track of what's right and what's wrong. Yes, completely, completely. Yes. and what it, is and what isn't. It's all technicalities. Yes, can I right. get away with this? That's can right. I screw the system? Can I yeah. bilk the insurance companies? Can I this and can I that? And now it's game on with everybody. But I think uh, the difference with this guy is that he's starting to develop a conscience about it. And, right. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be almost. It, it would be nice <laughs> if everybody had that same thing and to be it's very easy to decipher right from wrong it really is but when you have a contract that says you can do wrong or you have a technicality or law in the books or whatever whatever it is it works with it works in good ways and in bad ways oftentimes mostly bad this is what you get away from mm -hmm. and 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 this is oftentimes what i think of when i think of uh, people that uh, follow the scripture a little bit too closely and uh, the folks are a little more free in mm -hmm. their thinking you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I wish people would just free themselves up to either to do the right thing. And I'm, I'm glad this caller is getting to that point. You ready to roll here? I again, I'm just thinking about 20-year-old males and the probability of them <laughs> of doing the right putting thing. Putting down the penis and doing the right thing. Right. He's thinking it's with, like, the, with oh, the wrong hand. It's going to be but, tough. Yeah. I, the, the, the possibility of slipping up is, is yeah, also there. Right. So you, but, uh, you, it, well, you have to ask yourself, do you, wanna, do you want to lose both of the women or do you, you want to keep one? or you know, I don't know. All right. Tough call. All right. Heather? Yes? You're uh, 23 years old? Yes. And go. I just want some goddamn air in this place. Can <laughs> this we is turn the you, air on? This, no. Hello? This, this is where you ask your question. 
Okay. Um, well, Gamble. I broke up <laughs> um, with uh, my fiance because we were having problems, and I am still having uh, trouble getting over the breakup. How long ago did you break up? How long ago? About a month ago. And how long had you been with him? Uh, about seven months. Total? Yeah. Well, we knew each other before, but... Um, this is a seven-month relationship. Why is that so hard for you to get over? Well, it could be difficult. It could be, but I mean, it's... She's because I really cared about the, the guy. I, I really loved him, and... So why do I get... I just get the guy's an abusive a-hole in hmm. spades. Well, who but, broke up with who? Well, actually, what happened was we started... He... Fighting. We started fighting. And he, did it get physical? Um, yes. My temper can be very... Ooh, I see. Um, Troy, would you shut up and let her finish? Well, I'm not telling you this story. <laughs> Mr. Mooney from, uh, <laughs> from the Lucille Ball <laughs> show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Heather. Sorry for Mr. Mooney over here. <laughs> my temper can be very... Um, very high. Okay, now uh, Drew's high. figuring someone abused you physically growing up. Um, well, yeah, I... I mm. All right, Mr. Mooney's yeah. right. I, I've, I've had a lot of... Um, right. A lot of uh, verbal abuse and stuff. Right. And now to really compound things, you're living in Van Nuys. This yeah. This is really the, just a hub of um, hell. I, I, I hate it. I, yeah, I really of course. I really want to move out of here. Of course. Everyone should move out of Van Nuys. <laughs> Okay, where but are you that, living? Yeah, that doesn't it, it it doesn't it doesn't help matters. All right, well we're gonna make you feel better. All right. Yeah. Uh. Tip it, you nag. No, 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 no. First off, was this guy? What did this guy do? What did he do? Well, um, right now he's he's a peer counselor. He's taking peer counseling. He's, he's a peer take... counselor. He's taking peer counseling. Yeah. Which side of the peer table is he on, and what is, what do you mean he's taking it and he's um, doing it? He he's taking he's taking peer counseling classes right now um, to uh, counsel um, peers people that are like bipolar and and um, um, so, a mental health worker. Yeah. So he doesn't have a job. Not at the moment, no. All right, and uh, does he get physical with you? Would he get violent? <sighs> no, he's never gotten physical. Okay, um, and and who broke up with who? He did because um, he didn't know how how to how to handle his emotions, and he didn't know how to handle. Well, Heather, you're going down that path with him. Of of this, this is where the sort of domestic violence path gets going. Mm -hmm. Is where the one someone who's been a victim either is a victim or the victimizer or both in a relationship like this. And you, you guys were going down that path. It's a good thing you broke up. It's extra painful because, of course, it's the relationship you're used to. It's your, it's like what Dad was all about. It's the, the closest thing you know to a connected love relationship. But it's not good. It's not right. Right. Does that mean that I may have uh, um, abusive tendency, tendency to be abusive in a relationship? Well, mm -hmm. probably more like yes, you are, but more like your tendency is to be abused. You know, Seeking you know. people, people that got abused, they just like to dance in these relationships. I don't mean dance, cha cha, merengue. I mean they they stir it up all the time. Either they're abusing someone or they're getting abused themselves or they're causing someone to abuse them. That situation is going on constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself if that's a tendency of yours. We're guessing it is. Yeah. A little therapy, baby. You've you got to move out of Van Nuys. That's where the healing begins. Okay. And uh, you'll, you'll be past this guy. Don't get pregnant in the meantime. This is part of life. It's, yeah. it's a p yeah. painful part of life. And the fact that you're sort of... Uh, if you're willing to deal with this progressively and not just go through the cycle again with another guy, you'll look for solutions, you'll read something, you'll get some treatment, and it'll be better next time. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. You can better yourself. You read a book, take a walk. <laughs> so yeah, you can learn. You learn from the disasters that are yeah. our relationships. Yeah, and you can also do some learning anyway. A little, a little free time. I'm reading a book. Right? I think the title is Traumatic Relationships and Serious Mental Disorders, but it is really good. It's a cons it's a consolidation of all the stuff that's out there about situations like Heather's. Yeah. See, Drew likes to read. I like to watch 14 hours of TV <laughs> and then watch things on TiVo back in slow motion right. again and again yeah. and again that's and just, again. That's just the Baywatch. Right.
No, no. Slow mo- no, pausing no, live TV. The sports? It's good. Yeah, TiVo. TiVo's good for the sports. Watch well, the sports all the time. Replay. TiVo. Yeah, you do a slow mo. Never, uh, never stop. That thing that, that t- when I when I can stop TV, it's like stopping the world. <laughs> no. That's why I look at it. God, like you're playing God. The world. That's what you want to be. No, not playing God. I am God. You are God. Right? I am God. <laughs> right. P- people, people always talk about playing God. Yeah. No, no, no. God. You are God. Thank you. All right, let's take ourselves uh, just a little break, all right? Kevin yeah. Weissman is our guest tonight from uh, Alias, Computer Nerd. <laughs> 9 o'clock ABC. I'm glad you changed the description. Sunday. Calling all nerds. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be right back. Hello. This is your radio. Radio. Love line. We'll be right back. Love line is brought to you by Trojan, America's number one condom, the most trusted for over 80 years. Hey, Loveline, I'm Adam, that's uh, Dr. Drew. Forget about that phone number. Kevin Weisman's our guest tonight. He's from uh, Alias. Yes. ABC, 9 o'clock Sunday nights. And Drew, I, I don't know what's uh, up tonight. but With us? Uh, yeah, it's hot in here, but also I sound different to me, like no, something's up fine. with the headphones or yeah, something. Yeah, that's your headphones. No, you, sound, you sound good to me. I think we're extra yeah. angry about something, I don't know why. <laughs> no, I just... Extra aggressive. No, but, yeah. <laughs> well, w- once in a while, you you do something and you sort of hear your own voice echo in your head. Yeah, you feel that, like for you're you, that not must really be there. Very unpleasant. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, I bet. Imagine my voice oh, in my head. Listen, yeah, I, I hear your brother. Yeah, it's rough. I get your voice in my head every night. Yeah, yeah when you love it. Yeah, nightmares. Bite the towel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he hears over and over again. <laughs> Mary. Hello. You're 19. Yeah. What's up? Well, um, I have, like, relationship problems, I guess you'd say, dating. Um, I'm an attractive person, but it's hard for me to get guys. I don't know. Like, I'll date for a while, and then, like, it just ends. I never hear anything. It just ends. And I don't know what to do. I was asking advice. Maybe if you could help me find the problem, and I could... Who are the guys Who are the guys you're going out with? Um, Just um, guys that will come up to me, give me their number, will talk and at school no no not at school like um sometimes they'll come up to me when i'm walking or like a lot of places i get a lot of people might it be maybe who how old are these guys who are they um well they range from the ages of about um my age to about 25 26 they pick up on you while you're walking. Where are you walking yeah, to? Where, like, like I'll go run errands, or I just go walk, like, um, for exercise. And I don't know, like they. They're driving by, and they. No, no, <laughs> that's that's kind of nasty. I don't do that. Like guys do do that, but that's just weird. I'm trying to figure out why guys will jump Thanks out. Thanks for their... the clarity, by yeah. the way. <laughs> no, no, like um, a lot of places, like um, I'm not going to school right now. Oh, and all right. So that's why they wouldn't pick up at school, but. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe we're zeroing in on our problem here. When I asked her why you guys don't pick, get up or get get date her from like, school, they, like, no, they don't date me at school. That turns she out she's not going go to, school. to school. Right. So what about in France? The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I date you in France? I'm going to say no. Not yeah. anymore. Huh? All right. Yeah, hi. Yeah, all right, baby. So you, they, uh, where they were they you going? Up? Junior college? No, I was, um, see, I didn't finish, um, high school really and so um i'm going for my gd i see what happened with high school well um like i don't know um i was in group homes oh here we go okay all right what happened what happened to your family um like we had i had problems here in the house with my mom and my dad he left Mm. Mm. and you're with your mom again now yeah now and um like we'd always be constantly fighting and so Um, how was the things the that how, got called one time and they how, took me. How was the care at the group home? It, it wasn't good at all. Like, um, I would, I, I don't know, like girls, I guess I wasn't like them, I guess. And cause a lot of them were really good on stuff and they'd like try to beat up on me and all. I don't know. It was really weird. It was scary. And so hmm. I left from there. Yeah, but good times. <laughs> <laughs> no. And so I left from there. I had, um, 
at AWOL, and that's why I wasn't going to school. I see. It's uh, away oh, without but... leave. You live, where do you live now? You live on I your own? I live with my mom now. Yeah, back in yeah we, um, we went through a lot of therapy and everything, and so... When was the last yeah, time you dated yeah. a guy? When was the last time you dated a guy? We went on a date, like, or... When was dated? the last time you were going out with a guy? Um, like, boyfriend-girlfriend? All right, yeah, see, this second. is the problem here. She's having trouble tracking. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. And I, I guess what happens is, is when kids come from, like, chaotic, abusive homes, they have difficulty just sort of sitting still and listening. Well, they, they don't track well. Well, it, one of the things that's been proven is that emotional intelligence can affect intellectual performance. You know what I'm saying? Emotional experiences, emotional right. conditions can affect intellectual functioning. In her case, she's having trouble sort of concentrating and tracking. And, yeah. And, uh, we have a lot of those folks uh, but I wonder, the show, But I wonder if that's what maybe sort of... No, guys don't care about that. Yeah, how soon is... The, the question I have is, is how quickly do you, are you getting physical with well, she, these guys? And then, right. Plus, she may be married and just not know it. <laughs> she has four kids. She's she been married for, for three years I mean, now. I physical, and then they're out of there. Do you, you have know, sex with these guys? Mary? Um, yeah, yeah. Very yeah. Quick. Well, not all of them, but, but sometimes. But pretty quickly? Um, yeah. All right, Mary. Mm -hmm. This is Adam. This yeah. is a smart one. Mm -hmm. See, here's what we're going to do with you. Don't worry about the guys. Here's, yeah. your, here's your goals. Don't get pregnant. Oh, yeah. Have you been pregnant yet? No. Really? No, never. How Why you, not? How are you preventing? Oh, I, I take birth control and um, I use condoms. Good Excellent. girl. Excellent. Good girl. Good girl. Now, remember, you uh, put the condom over the guy's penis and you... Uh, Eat the birth control, not the other way around. <laughs> no, um, it's, um, I get shots. Good. Oh, excellent. Who excellent. does that for you? Um, my doctor. The doctor. Just, like, yeah, that's I'm good. too lazy and I want to take the pills off. Good no, girl. That's good. That's good. Fine. Yes. You know that about yourself. That's good. Good. Yeah. So you don't get pregnant. You, uh, worry about, you get your GED. Yeah. You, I already have, like, my school plans all laid out. You got Great. The, you, you, excellent. You get the GED, then it's right off to junior college. Then uh, by your 35th birthday, you go into your second year of junior college. <laughs> and uh, when you're in your 50s, you transfer to uh, Loma Linda. But here's the deal. Uh, hold out on guys a little more. Let's see, That's how, see right. how they stick around. Right. See what the, Get right. a relationship going before it becomes physical. And, and, yeah, hold out sexually. But yeah, and also you get, get the GED, get the counseling in, patch things up with mama. You know what I mean? These are more Get, get your life. These get, are more take important. care of yourself. Which she yeah. seems on track for. She really does. Yes, yeah, she's yeah. walking. And avoid the guys in the big Cadillacs when they're driving by. That's right. <laughs> Unless uh, they're the uh, older Jews, and you should hook up. You'll know them because they uh, have the uh, they get the fake convertible right. roof. You know. Oh, it's they pulse, like the pulse through the roof. The pulse, right. Oh, the, and the actually Rome roof. Yes. Right. Has uh, actually looks like a convertible, yeah, right. but it's not it's really not. a convertible. <laughs> that's right. a class move. <laughs> Daniel. Uh, yeah. You're 19. Yep. What's up? Um. Actually, I uh, just want to let you guys know I do listen to your show all the time. Thank you. This is actually my first time, but uh, I was also in a group home uh -huh. for uh, about a year and a half. And uh, it was actually had to do with a, a lady. She's like 36. And um, she was actually my social worker. And uh, Hang on, you hooked up with her? Uh, no, see, see, that's what I'm trying to find out. I, I can't really tell because, um, I don't know, I'm not really, I wasn't really into dating and all that. And I haven't had many girlfriends, but... Um, I don't know, it uh, started off with, you know, a client-social worker relationship, and uh, it kind of, you know, it got it where it was. We were talking for hours every day, uh -oh. pretty much like maybe sometimes three to four hours every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the phone or in person? Uh, on the phone and in person. Uh -huh. um, she's bought me gifts. Uh, I bought her a couple things, too. That's, that's fine. No, that's not fine. <laughs> that is not fine. Well, I mean... Why she get you a tie or something or like a strap-on like, or... What? What she gets Daniel, you? her job is is to maintain a boundary with you. Yeah, and I know, but that's her job. Even though I'm out of Masada, I mean I'm out of the group home. That's the name of the group home. Yeah, that's the name of the group. Oh, wait, how old how old is he? He's, He's nineteen. Nineteen. She's, she's thirty six. Yeah. Thirty six. Totally. And Daniel. Yeah. If on one hand you were having intimate and warm feelings about her and you were confused about them, yeah. Sometimes that can be normal. When you're in sort of a therapeutic well, relationship with someone, I don't know if I should say something because hang like, on, yeah. shut up. And her job is to maintain a boundary and hold the therapeutic frame to keep it safe for you and not to respond to those feelings and to let you kind of go with those feelings wherever they need to go. Well, it's not like you, I'm doing anything wrong. So how's she hurting me? She's not yet. 
if she's the kind of person that responds to those and reciprocates them, she's unethical and disturbed. And she's not the kind of person that should be doing the therapy and certainly not the person you should be involved with. Even though she's really helping. Daniel, mm-hmm. she may not be doing what I'm what I'm suggesting. No, I'm, un- I'm just trying to understand. Cause it's what I'm saying is the fact that you exchange gifts is already sort of problematic. That's a, that's a boundary violation right there. And that maybe she'll be able to hold the frame beyond that, but there's no way. If she dates you, then she's not the person you should be dating. Yeah, you see what I'm is, saying? Uh, it's a catch-22. So just let it be her, your social worker and somebody that helps you. Do not go further with this. She wants to take you to Vegas. Watch out. No, don't do it. Don't do it, Daniel. It'll undo everything you've accomplished so far. Yeah. Think so? Yeah. I know so. I know so. Uh, it doesn't matter because I'm actually leaving the Marine Corps in about a month. So. All right, good. So, well, like, I'll probably see her. Get on your knees, scumbag! It does matter because you want to take something uh, genuine and nurturing with you and what's likely to be a very stressful experience. Right. And take some porn, too. <laughs> uh, especially if you go over the and Middle smoke East. smoke less pot. Smoke less pot, Daniel. No, I don't smoke no pot. Yeah? yeah. Wow. Today. Today. No, uh, for, let's see, a year and a half? A year and a half, but right. it's still, we can you still you hear You must have really smoked a lot for a while there, though. What do you say that? We, we, can, can, hear hear, we can hear the laugh. Well, because, dude, I was just thinking about that was jacked up what you were saying. How many years did you smoke pot for? Oh, like a year. I know, but you you used dude to explain the pot smoking, (laughs) which is always always a sign. It's an admission of guilt, really. What what, what was it about his laugh that tipped you off? (laughs) Pot laugh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just a pot laugh. Uh, Adam, make him laugh again. Put him on. It's not that easy. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, like, we haven't heard any laughter yet, have you? We're an hour forty minutes into the show, for Christ's sake. I've been laughing. You've been making me laugh. Daniel? Huh? Hey, uh, let me ask you a couple yeah. of questions. Yeah, go ahead. You're going in the Marine Corps, right? Yeah, correct. You're a straight guy, right? Uh, trying my best. Uh-huh. Oh, what does that mean? Well, I mean, I do probably little things, you know. Everybody does. I'm only young. Right, right. I mean, I tell little lies. Oh, I think he Did misunderstood he the, the question. He just used the answer. And I think yeah. he missed. Oh, oh. straight, edge. straight, 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 straight on the straight and narrow. I think is what yeah. he thought. Yeah, straight edged. Yeah, yeah. He's saying no to that. <laughs> that penis straight to the ass. Right. <laughs> right. Not that. He could be laughing right now. Put him back on. Oh, oh, you're the one that doesn't tolerate these guys on the air. I got it. All right, there it is. You hear it? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. You hear that kind of? <laughs> All right, buddy. Only I, I, I don't don't have sex with your counselor. Let's clarify. And, this. Uh, wait, hey, let, also, uh, can, I, can I say one more thing? My, no. one, wait, wait, I need to know one more thing. No, 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 Stupid guys laugh like that. Too. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily. It's not attributed to just. How do we pot. know? How do we know even smoking pot heavily? We're never wrong. Stupid guys smoke. Well, like he's a runaways. You know, oh, he could have been home. doing heroin. <laughs> yeah, so you show <laughs> show me a nineteen year old who's living in a group home that has not uh, smoked a share of weed, Drew. Please, mm, how dare true. you? Ah, of course. Mm. Here, here's 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 what goes on, Drew. Guys who smoke pot just sort of take on the characteristics of stupid people. Yeah. And that's how stupid guys laugh. Yeah. So you could be stupid and have that laugh, too. Except we've never heard that. We've never been wrong. Yeah, all right. Kaya? we got to take a break. It's Kaya. I, I figured it'd be Kaya, but is it K-A-Y-A? It's okay. Is that how you spell it? K-H-I-A. Or K-I-H-A, sorry. Oh, all right. Kia. Kaya. Kiha. K-H-A. Kiha. All right. Hey, uh, hold on a second, would you okay, please? Cool. You hooked up with your uh, ex-boyfriend? Well, we're kind of hooking up again. And mm-hmm. then he told you he blew some guys? Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. It's not a turn-on, right? Totally no. Well, what now, hold on, hold on. As opposed to if she had said to him, I'd been with some girls? That's right. And then he'd be into it. Yeah. That's right. That's interesting. All right, let's take ourselves a uh, quick break. We'll get back with uh, Kaya. And uh, her ex after this. Love line, love line. One eight hundred love one nine one. Back in a minute. Hey, everybody. 
everybody. Kevin Weissman is our guest tonight from Alias, 9 o'clock, Sunday nights. And uh, go ahead, ABC. Kevin's going to give himself a little plug. Yeah, uh, check out the show, Alias, of course, uh, Sunday nights at 9. And uh, for those who live in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. come check out Crazy Drunk. Uh, as a play I'm, I'm starring in at the uh, Inside the Ford, John Anson Ford Theater uh, in Hollywood, opening November 7th. You can check out information on the web, www.buffalonights.org, B-U-F-F-A-L-O-N-I-G-H-G-S dot org. So uh, if you're in L.A., come on out. Yeah, and uh, people haven't been to the, uh, the John theater. Anson Ford Theater should uh, go over there and check it out. It's uh, right right on the Coanga Pass. Yeah, across from the Hollywood Bowl. Yep. All right, let's talk to Kaya, who's yeah. uh, 20 now. Kaya, you recently hooked up with an ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And you, you had sex with him? Yeah. And then he told you that he'd blown a few guys in the... Well, it's, he's like, I haven't seen him since high school. Mm -hmm. like, we went together in high school, and I lost it to him and all mm -hmm. that great mm -hmm. stuff. And then, like, I left high school, and I moved to New York for a year. Mm -hmm. And then I came back. Mm -hmm. And that's what he had told me. What were you like, doing well, in New York? I heard that he was gay. What were you doing in New York? I'm just having fun. I just always said I'd move there, so. How, how did you support yourself? You left high school and went to New York for a year just to well, have fun? I, like, made this big move. Like, my parents moved me, and I kind of lost it for a while. And then I turned 18 and just thought I'd get away for a year, regroup. I'm not understanding. What do you mean you lost it for a while? Just, like, partied way too much in high school. So you got addicted. Yeah, but I don't have the smokers. I don't have the pot laugh. Okay, well, then. <laughs> all right. Well, then, then we don't have the yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we don't even talk to you. She's got the heroin arm, <laughs> but no, no, uh, no, no, she doesn't no. have the pot laugh, so she's okay. No, I just drank a lot. I mean, and I like smoke cigarettes, but that sucks. And oh, you're Mormon. You're Mormon. Rasp. Are you a Mormon? That's G14. <laughs> that doesn't fall into play. Are you Mormon? Hold on a second. Yeah, is, is everyone calling the show insane? <laughs> <laughs> People have diff I, You know, I wonder. Do they? Are you talking to them? Do you think your mic works? I think my mic works, but was she playing Battleship or what? Was she talking to us? G14. G14. <laughs> you talk my Battleship. <laughs> People don't. An they don't answer the question you ask them. They say these things in passing that are so bizarre. Like, well, we went out for high school. She's calling from Utah, by the way. We we went we went out in high school, and then then we broke up. It's like why? I moved to New York. In high school? Yeah, I just need to get away. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Hi, high school? Yeah, I always want to go to New York and party we're a little. Like, we're like, what? Part, well, I party for a while, so the, any of my parents had to go to New York for a year. Yeah. And well, they don't expect us to go, huh? What? Right. What are you well, talking then, about? Well, then her definition of party is I used alcohol and tobacco. Yeah. And that's why I went, ooh, tobacco. Well, that Mormon. That's a Mormon thing. Right. Put that in there. All right. So anyway, Kai, let's just uh, slow it down for a second. Okay. The point is, is you're back in Utah. Uh-huh. Where did you stay in New York for that year? Uh, just in Manhattan. You just had your own apartment? No, I was a nanny. nanny. You were a nanny. Okay. You, you worked right. there for a year. What? You worked in New yeah. York for a year. Yeah, if you call that working. Well, I'm sure the people parents, that hired you did. Yeah, they didn't know you were drinking all their booze and <laughs> stealing their cigarettes. Tobacco, yeah. No, I was a good nanny when I was working, but... All right, baby. All right, and you were there at, like, 17? Like, a week after I turned 18. All right. I took my GED when I was 17. Smooth. And are you Mormon? Uh-huh. Okay. All so, right. then we clued into that a little bit. Are you back with the church now? No. No. So, okay. you're not, that's not your thing? Um, I believe it, but, you know. You're not, you're not active. You're not active. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's that's good. You believe it, you just don't want it to cramp your style. Do you go over to the, the tabernacle? It's a, te it's a technicality, Adam. Yeah. Well, why don't, you just, why don't you just not believe it as long as you're at it? Well, because I really do believe it. No, you don't. No, I really do. You wouldn't live the kind of life that you lead if you really be believed it. You just wouldn't. It yeah, doesn't make sense. How many brothers and You sisters? don't really believe it. You just don't have the energy not to believe it. Yeah. I have the typical Mormon family. Yeah. You, know, you have like 16 brothers. So I have three brothers, actually, and three sisters. Okay. All right. All right. Anyway, here's the thing. Don't uh, forget about this guy. I mean, you had sex with him, then he blew for you guys, and then you had sex with him again. You're really living the Mormon life. I know you believe it. <laughs> and uh, so, who cares? Did you? Uh, he's he's living his Mormon life the way did you he, use a, he interprets it. Did you use a condom? Yeah. Okay, okay you're all right. Now find yourself a nice uh, Mormon guy and settle down. All right. 
<laughs> no, thanks. All right, good times. <laughs> I, I don't believe people believe it. I know they don't. You mm. wouldn't live it. You wouldn't do it. It's pretty hardcore. The, uh, well, again, this is the, this is what we've been all very, you and I have been quite angry about tonight, people not being honest with themselves. Yeah. She, she like, believes she believes it because she's not being honest with how she's actually behaving. Yeah, I'm yeah. smoking, I'm drinking, I'm blowing, I'm Mormon. Yeah, yeah no, I'm into it. I just, I'm not, I mean, I believe it, I'm just not really into it. Well, there are other, <laughs> there are probably other uh, tenets of Mormon religion besides not drinking and smoking. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't want to speak for Mormons, you're pretty much in or you're out. Right. And uh, they'll, they do a good job of the guys of the world, they really do. Yeah, they just wanted to come back in and embrace it. Good policing. Yeah. You had to go on a, uh, a mission in your morning, right around the world, and try yeah. to convert people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if they send the chicks on the missions. You never hear uh, about the chicks going treasure. on the missions. A buried treasure, Nick? Hello? Nick. Oh, yes, sir? 21, what's up? Oh, well, I had uh, two questions. Well, I have a question first. Where, where was that buried treasure you were talking about? Uh, what buried treasure? Oh, well... I was asking the lady that screamed me in the beginning that I have a problem when I give oral pleasure to my girlfriend. And I have the problem is that I want to tell her to shave her private, and I want to know what's a nice way to ask her to tell her. Just tell her. I want to hurt her feelings. Because she's one of those sentimental girls, and I don't really want to. She's grown attached to her pubes. She can't (laughs) stand the thought of seeing them go. Right, Maybe so leave, you leave, imagine. A, leave a Mach 3 uh, accidentally under a pillow. You can imagine how uh, sort of romantic she would be being with a guy like Nick. Oh, by the way, Drew, you pursuing the uh, buried treasure I line? know, of course. Did you ever think that that was going to be addressed? Well, I, I thought it would, but then I should have realized it was tonight and it was a love line caller. That's mm-hmm. right. That's right. I was, I'm rolling my eyes at you, Drew, that you even thought that you could ask about something that someone was talking about. All right, so, about. Give, what about, so give, him, give him a piece of advice. Uh... I would say that you can simply tell her that uh, it's going to help you do your job a little better if uh, she's a little more streamlined down there. (laughs) Just like the swim coach tells you to shave your legs, a little less resistance in the water. Same thing. You're just a coach. And I would also say that you could make a little game out of it, too. Do it with her. Participate. Yeah, you yeah. guys take a shower together, and then when you get out, you go like, hey, why don't you do a little, you know, right. the stuff you do when you're 20, 21, and you're yeah. just dating a chick, and it's new, and all that, the stuff you have zero energy for now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he should, uh, he should shave something of his. Maybe a fair, right. a fair trade, perhaps. <laughs> but you remember that all that that energy yeah. you'd have, like, hey, let's get in the shower, and then hey, right. let's give her a little haircut. Down. Ooh, that's nasty. Ooh. Straight to bed now? What are you doing? Just go yeah, to sleep. it's like, uh, let's. Uh, scissors are in the cabinet. <laughs> you can use the Mach three, but change the blade. I'm gonna go downstairs. Uh, hey, you want those pearl onions in your peas, or do you want this? I like the pearl onions. <laughs> I'm gonna start thawing the peas. You don't like the pearl? Oh, yeah. Why'd you buy the pearl onions? You'd be like, oh, don't give me that crap. You didn't buy them for me. I'm just going to start heating them. <laughs> Put a little splash of olive oil in there. I'll be downstairs. <laughs> this is all while she's shaving. Oh, I'm going to beat off to the internet <laughs> later, so don't, uh, don't tie up the computer. <laughs> Shave yourself down, sweetie. And, and mop up, too. I don't want the maid thinking those are my pubes. You don't want the drain to get clogged? Yeah. Keep it out of the drain. <laughs> All right, we'll be back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these Datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the Dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the Dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. Love Line. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. No, no, when they have a knee or ankle or something. Yeah. All oh, right. Gosh. That's it. Drew? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's, that's just all she wrote. I'm tired tonight. I don't know, maybe I'm hungover. Oh, really? No, no, you're different when you're hungover. Isn't it? Is it maybe? Is it full moon or something? No. I don't think no. so. It's probably just warm in here. Must right? be Kevin. That's <laughs> it. Must be Kevin. Kevin Weissman, everybody. Alien. Hey. 
Sunday nights, uh, ABC and uh, also uh, John Anson Ford coming up. Give that uh, give that web web yes, address. Yes, uh, Buffalo Nights dot org. Uh, one word: B U F F A L O N I G H T S. Show opens November seventh. Crazy drunk. Come check it out, and uh, also go see the band Trainwreck and Tenacious D at the Derby next Friday night, the 18th. Check it out. Both uh, good venues. Thanks, Kevin. All right, buddy. And until next time, this is Adam Crowell for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Are you a Mormon? That's G14. That doesn't fall into play. Are you Mormon? Hold on a second. Yeah, is, is everyone calling the show insane? <laughs> this has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins-Ingle. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.